tax season is here, which means you've received or are expecting that tax refund any day now. And you're thinking about what to spend it on. How about a new home with save with Conrad.com. We're helping renters become homeowners every single day. And it's more affordable than you think. You don't need perfect credit. You don't need a huge down payment. In fact, you may not need a down payment at all. At SaveWithConrad.com, we take the stress out of the home buying process. We'll determine your buying power. We'll even help you find a realtor. And unlike the banks, we don't say no. We say not yet, but here's how. So if you're not ready right now, we'll get you on a plan to be ready. Stop throwing your money away, paying someone else's mortgage with your rent. And start the path towards owning your own home today at SaveWithConrad.com. NMLS number 32416, Equal Housing Lender. Save with Conrad.com. Yeah. Words are about to be spoken on the extreme life of Matt Hardy, presented to you by the Ad Free Shows and Podcast Heat Networks. I'm John Alba. That's the broken one, the welcome one, the spoken really? one himself, Mr. Matt Hardy. Matt Hardy. Speaking, speaking. speaking. Uh, yeah. Hey, I just got in to lovely Philadelphia. It's a big yeah, weekend. We, uh, we were going to try to bang this out while you were at the Hardy compound, but unfortunately, because you're in the forest, the internet ceased to exist. Yes, the uh, storm shut us down, like PE. You know, it just so shut us down. We are crunching this one in. I'm right outside of Philly. You're in Philly. It's going to be a great WrestleMania weekend. And why is it a great WrestleMania weekend, Matt Hardy? It's a great WrestleMania. Uh, it's a great WrestleMania weekend because first and foremost, not only are you going to be able to get the Hardy Boy signatures, you are going to be able to attend. An extreme life of Matt Hardy podcast with myself and John Alba and some guests. And we are going to talk about the TLC years. And then if you're in the industry, in the business, is a great WrestleMania for you too. Even if you're not on the big show, not on the show, showcase of the immortals, then you can still attend a Matt Hardy pod virtual AMA seminar, which is going to take place at the Monster Factory at 9 p.m. Friday night, tonight, tonight as this drops. Yes, you might not actually be on the Showcase of the Immortals this year, but Matt Hardy wants to help you get there. So we got a couple of these live shows. They are today as you are listening to this. If you are in Philadelphia, 4 o'clock at the Sheridan Downtown Philadelphia where WrestleCon is, Matt's going to be there signing all day. And then at 4 o'clock, we're heading over to an intimate setting where, I mean, it's going to be, you are up close and in person with Matt. This is going to be our most intimate live event yet that we've done, and I'm very excited about that. Uh, it's going to be a really special one. We are talking all things tables, liars, and chairs. Oh, my. There you go. <laughs> it's going to be great. We're going to talk about all those matches. And we, as Matt said, we have a very special guest who I'm so excited. To probably, my guess is someone you probably haven't seen in a pretty long time, right? Uh, it's, it's been a minute. Yeah, it's been, it's been a okay. while. Well, they're very excited to hang out with us. And then, as Matt said... Uh, across the river after that. MattHardyLive.com. Get your tickets for the WrestleCon show. Or if you're going to the Monster Factory show, if you're a Monster Factory student, you're in for free. If you're in the industry, as Matt said, wrestler, promoter, commentator, whatever you may be, uh, $15. Uh, John Alba, SFC, J O N A L B A S F C at gmail.com. There may be an opportunity to buy at the door, but get in ahead of time. That's going to be the easiest way to guarantee that you have to see. I know it's going to be a packed show. We had a show at the Monster Factory today as we taped this on Thursday. Uh, I did a little tribute to Matt Hardy off a... <laughs> yeah, what, what, what do you think of my uh, flying crossbody off the mini ladder? I uh, I, I thought your flying crossbody was, was all right. All right. Uh, I, I thought it was okay. Uh, and I, I thought you had good form and in, in holding your guns. Yeah, um, put the guns up. The, the other guys, they, they were up a little early, so... They saw you coming. That was, that, yeah, that, you know, it's that's, weird. That's yeah. sort of problematic. Well, you know, I've watched a lot of wrestling and I know that when someone goes on a ladder and there's a bunch of people out there, normally it's fine. You jump off, they all catch you, right? I've seen a lot, I've seen this before. And 
I figured my guy was there with all the other guys fighting. I was like, you know what? He'll take one for the team. I'll go out there. We'll wipe everyone out and we'll be back in business. But it, amazingly, it's like they all saw it coming and he was the only one who didn't. And I ended up taking out my own guy. <laughs> I, yeah. I mean, uh, you were under the premise you were going to go jump off the ladder in there. You, you're like a, a bowling pin. Uh, you're, you're like a bowling ball and you hit the bowling pin and then right. knocks them all down one by one by one by one. But right. No such luck today. I felt like I was 30 feet in the air, man. <laughs> I felt like I was Jeff Hardy dangling off the belts at WrestleMania 17. My God, he's 25 feet above the floor. <laughs> Think about your family, John. <laughs> Good thing I'm single as hell, right? <laughs> <laughs> it was a great time, though. The Monster Factory is awesome. And I know it's your first time at the Monster Factory, so I'm very excited for that. And yeah. uh, it's, it's going to be going to be a good it's time it's had it. by all. Make sure you head on over to WrestleCon. Get your items signed by Matt. Uh, Matt is always among the most sought after autographs and picture opportunities at these conventions alongside Brother Nero. Uh, and Brother Nero's got a concert as we tape this too. So some cool stuff yeah. going on there. Uh, love love that it's a great weekend for you, man. And uh, everyone wants to know, you showing up at WrestleMania? I don't know. I guess uh, we will see Saturday or Sunday. Those are the days of WrestleMania. That's That is true. Who knows? I know. I mean, there's a tag team ladder match, man. Maybe I do. Maybe I don't. Who knows? It's crazy. You know, this week and last week, the anniversaries of all these WrestleManias. Yeah. And I know you always try to say, oh, 23 years ago today, says the net. Yeah. Wild seeing all of these just happen back to back to back and all these memories come up, isn't it? Yeah, it it is, and there's there's some of them I missed. There's one day where there's so many things I did like four, but there were like six or seven things I could have done. Um, yeah, it, it's it's wild. I mean, it's that that time of the year, you know. Yeah. End of end of March, beginning of April, it's it's WrestleMania season. It's it's the uh, it's the Super Bowl time, you know. Sure. Pro wrestling, it really is. Yeah, uh, and the, the, my favorite part about it is that we have covered so many of those here on the extreme life of matt hardy so if you want to hear the behind the scenes stories of them you head on over to extremehardy.com that is where you're going to get those and you can find our entire archive uh, if you're not subscribed by the way to matt's youtube channel definitely do that right now matt hardy brand that's where the extreme life drops in video form but also it's an opportunity for you to check out our archives and clips from the podcast definitely would love for you to support that if you are not already yes um, please do matt it, it is WrestleMania weekend, uh, we'll talk about AEW. We're going to reveal the winner of our greatest of all time tournament, and we're going to answer fan questions. But got to talk a little mania here, man. Uh, I mean, we, we got a full episode about Cody Rhodes in our archives as well. Mega, mega main events, man. Dwayne and Roman versus Rollins and Cody. Yeah. And then night two, the main event of WrestleMania 40. It's going to be Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns. Is this the year, Matt? <laughs> The stipulation is to be determined. The, zip, the stipulation is to be determined based on the outcome of night one. I mean, how, how do you see it shaking out? How do you see it? This has been one of the most intriguing stories in modern wrestling. It has. It's been very intriguing, and I'm, I'm here for it. I, I I, honestly, I think you're going to end up with some sort of scenario where it, it, if, if Rock and Roman win, it's blood on rules. Is that correct? Correct. And anything goes. I think somehow you're going to see those guys win. It's going to be blood on bloodline rules, uh, and then you're going to have all this interference from the bloodline. You're going to have a bunch of chaos uh, on Sunday, and then I think they're going to have a match. They'll screw them out of it in, in whatever way, and then on Sunday, uh, I think that Cody, besides just having Seth Rollins, uh, he's going to have other business with Drew McIntyre that day. I think he's going to have some other people, some stars of the past, back him up and and. Uh, and get into it with the bloodline. That yeah. would be my guess. And I think at the end of the day, I think Cody ends up pulling off the W and, and Cody goes forward as the face of the WWE. So we say that Cody wins finally. After a year of saying Cody should have won, we, we think it's going to change. We think the, the trigger is going to be pulled. I, I think that, 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 that would be my prediction. That'd be my yeah. prediction. Uh, yeah. I, I can't confidently say anything after last year when I had to <laughs> command shift delete my entire column I'd written about Cody winning, but I feel pretty good about it too. And I think you're right. I think the main event 
of WrestleMania is going to be the culmination of 40 years of WrestleMania. It's going to mm-hmm. be the Avengers Endgame to Saturday night's Avengers yes. Infinity War. Yes, and, uh, agreed. Agreed. What do you think of the odds are that we get an Austin stunner on Rock on Sunday? I, I'm here for it. Yeah. Sign, sign me up. You know I hate overbooking, but if there was ever a time to overbook a match, it feels like this might be the time to do it. I'm uh, I'm here for the entertainment. Don, you're you're King Gaga <laughs> over here. You know, if if uh, Lady Gaga exists, you're Mr. Gaga. There's <laughs> certainly no doubt about that. Um, any any other fun WrestleMania predictions from here, man? Uh, I'm I'm very curious about the the tag team title ladder match. Yeah, the Judgment Day about what's going to happen and if, if something is going to change on the fly. Who knows? Uh, well, but doing, I, so those two belts are going to be defended separately in the match. Mm, so mm-hmm. the first set will be grabbed, and then the second set will be grabbed. So I think they're going to be splitting the belts. Okay. I'm, so I'm that, good with that's that. That's interesting. Uh, do you think your boy Drew gets it? you think he has his WrestleMania moment finally here? I, w- I would love to see Drew get it, especially because the last time he did get – kind of a WrestleMania moment. It was during the pandemic where it wasn't necessarily a moment because, you know, pro wrestling without audiences isn't really pro wrestling. So, no, yes, I do hope Drew, Drew gets it. And I love yeah. what Drew McIntyre has been doing. Big fan of his work recently. Rumor and innuendo tells me that Drew has a big entrance set for WrestleMania. So we'll see uh, if he gets that moment. There's just something special about coming out there through that massive stage. It's It's just different than anything else you experience, I'd have to imagine. Yeah, I mean it is. It's uh it's it's one of those one of those things where you're not guaranteed a lot of the WrestleMania moments. And if you come out in a big match, one of the main events, one of the marquee matches, when you come down that aisle, you need to take it in and enjoy it because you only get uh you're lucky to get one in a lifetime. Yeah. And if you get multiple, you probably get a handful, you know. So like enjoy those moments. Take them in and uh and live and be present in that moment. Matt, there was a lot of controversy this week uh, as a result of some WrestleMania interviews. CM Punk did one. Cody Rhodes did one with Ariel Helwani. Ariel's really good at poking and poking and poking and getting stuff out of people. And it was this interesting juxtaposition of AEW's perception, right? You know, Punk was definitely a little more critical. I thought he was pretty straight shooting with it, but he was he was pretty critical. Uh, and, and Cody was was a little more, you know, with without that initial infrastructure, the company doesn't really go anywhere. Uh, do you have any right. thoughts on anything that was shared this week on that front? Uh, certainly made for a lot of news. <laughs> no doubt about that. Uh, it, it definitely created a lot of chatter, which is a uh, which is a, g- a good buzz, uh, I guess, for the WrestleMania event. I mean, people were definitely talking about it. People were talking about CM Punk's comments. Um, as as far as some of the things he said. I, I, to me, it's very, very CM Punk, you know, so. Uh, for better or for worse. For better or for worse. It's just very CM Punk. It's just very much who he is, right? Um, the Cody stuff was was cool. I, I love how Cody still has great respect and, and greatly acknowledges, you know, the Bucks and Kenny and, uh, you know, Tony just for starting AEW because it is so important to the industry. And that's one of the reasons I'm just I'm such a big fan of AEW because it is important. I think it is paramount for the health and just the survival of the industry because competition just makes everything better. It gives people that you know are moved out of one place another option. You know, it's 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 a huge positive, no matter sure. which way you slice it. Uh, but but I, I do love that Cody does acknowledge those positives about it. Um, and, and I think that the fact of the matter is AEW is going to be a very controversial subject when discussed on any kind of WWE programming, specifically depending on who the person is, you know, and like what their stance is on it. And it, it's hard. And I know we talk about this a lot, especially with you, you know, being a journalist, talking about having checks and balances. And when someone just starts ranting, they're not able to go all the way into their narrative and, and control their narrative, you know, where you can you can issue checks and balances and, and keep them in check. That's something that is is very interesting here because, like, you have some guys that can do that themselves, and then you have some guys that don't want to do that at all, and they just want to take their narrative and push it to the end. And that's kind of how I leave that. Well, I'm I'm glad to share 
that the extreme life of Matt Hardy is not being sunset anytime soon and that we are <laughs> we are good to go for the future here. Uh, yeah, that, it was an interesting week. I'll tell you that, buddy. That's, uh, <laughs> it was a uh, it was definitely a um, it's a rarity. I'll say this. It's a rarity. The Internet is in my favor and the Internet was pretty much in my pocket this week. So I'll take the small W's that I can, you know. Uh, yeah, a wise a wise choice for the internet to get behind me this week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, All right, know, Matt. Especially, like you said, put, putting stuff in perspective. I, I had one of those moments actually this week. Uh, I was going to say a big shout out to, to Woofy. Woofy lost his first tooth this oh, week. Oh, very, very nice. Tooth Fairy visited lost, him? Uh, yeah, the Tooth Fairy visited him. He was super excited about it. You know, Max was lost four or five teeth which was Wolfie's first one so he was very very excited and uh we had some beautiful weather uh <clears throat> i was at home a couple days with wolfie and barty while maxwell and ever were gone to salem with rabbi while they were doing gothic baby promotion right and then maxwell got back we had a great day it was 86 degrees we were out there swimming in the pool the water was kind of warm it had been warm the last couple of days and we were sitting in there and just like wolfie said like and Barty, they said, these are going to be such great memories. Thanks for spending all this time with us. And I was like, man. And I said, they're going to be old and they're going to be thinking about this. Like, we grew up in such a cool place. And, like, we had this pool and our dad yeah. would go out there with us every day and jump and be crazy. And, like, I said, I'll, I'll be dead and gone then. And, that, and it's crazy. Like, I enjoy this so much. Like, and, like, it, it just it makes me, once again, like, it, it validates so much. Like, you can't. You can't worry too much about the trivial petty shit in life because sure. like live for those big moments his life is just so short and and that that that, that right there was a big example it's like man these kids are enjoying this and we do this every day all the time it's like just cool that we do this in this routine and they're they're making memories from it. it's just like yeah don't sweat the small stuff man you can that stuff will it'll stress you out and it'll kill you don't sweat the petty things and don't pet the sweaty things that's uh that's the right. way to go about living that life uh, great stuff there, Matt. Great perspective. You want to reveal the winners of the greatest of all time tournament? Oh, my God. I'm very nervous. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Lay it on me. So I want to thank everyone who voted over the course of this month-long tournament. I really enjoyed doing this. Uh, it was it was really controversial at first, some of the first-round matchups. But, again, it was all randomized seating. Um. This was so much fun to do. I know you really enjoyed doing this tournament this past month. And we got our finals matchup of the Dudley Boys versus the Hardy Boys. Two icons of the TLC era. I know you were a little concerned. But have no fear, Matt Hardy, because you're winners of the greatest of all time tournament with 78.5% of the vote in the final round. The Hardy Whoa. Boys. Whoa. How about that? Look at that. I have not. Yeah. I have not seen it. They might. They might. They might. Wow. Say okay. it was, they might say it was biased, but nonetheless, you guys. Won. I am. Uh, that, that's very cool. I can't believe it was seventy-eight percent. Seventy-eight. Okay. Five. That's cool. Thank you. Thank very, you. Very, very cool. Thank you for the confidence. And uh, and myself and Brother Nero, I, I greatly appreciate it. That's amazing. You you are the winners of the tit. Oof. You are the winners of the goat. Congratulations, goat. man! Thank you, thank you, thank you, man. All right, we do Still. good with these uh with these things that end with T. <laughs> that you certainly do. That you certainly do. Thank you to everyone who voted. Maybe next year we'll do a different tournament and and find a, a new greatest of all time um all right we got asked matt anything we got so many questions and i can't wait to get into them from people uh but before we can matt hardy you know what i gotta ask you please without further ado hit us with that matt fact matt fact matt prefers dogs to cats i mean you know i'm about it but what what brought you to that conclusion uh, once again, uh, in my conversations with, uh, Wolfie and Barty, it's funny that picture that I posted, they happened to see that on my phone where myself and Jeff were playing in our dad's dog lot. And, uh, they're just like, Oh, dogs. They both said, Oh, we would like to have dogs. And like, Rebby's not a big dog fan, but she wasn't a anything, uh, anything 
pet fan until she just recently got these birds and she's she became a big fan of the birds now so i just said uh and they said what do you like better dogs or cats i said uh oh, i just always had dogs growing up i said like cats are okay but i'm much more of a dog person i mean if i had to choose dog or cat it would be a dog every yeah. single time see i feel like she'd be about the black cat because you know the gothic vibes yeah but I could also see her going like full legally blonde L Woods Chihuahua in the pocket, carrying it around kind of thing. Yeah, no, she did. She had a cat growing up, and she loved her cat. Her senior Benjamin still has a cat. Okay, the house. There so you know. they, they they like to play with the cat once in a while, but they would really like the dog. But you know, she just she's like, oh, that dog. These these kids are worse than animals as it is keeping this house a mess. I don't want a dog shitting on the floor. Fair point. <laughs> Fair point. Fair point. <laughs> All right, Matt Hardy, we asked all of our Extreme Life faithful to send us questions for this week's Ask Matt Anything, our first of 2024. Are you ready to be put in the hot seat? I am ready to be put in the hot seat. All right. Put me in the seat that's hot. Here we go. Top guy, Adam Krasnoff. That's a good one here. Says, Matt, were any wrestlers disappointed about being in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal instead of having a program at WrestleMania? <laughs> and were you disappointed for being put in it two years straight? No, I wasn't really disappointed for being put in it two years straight. The thing that was strange was like I, I loved doing it the year that, that I won it, and we did the angle with Bray. I thought that came off really well and, and was really good storytelling. The year after that, uh, there was talk of us doing uh, like a four-way tag match and being involved with the Usos and, and doing some of that, and that, that didn't happen. And then like a week or so later, we ended up wrestling the Usos, and we won the SmackDown Tag Team titles. Or actually, that may have been the SmackDown after Raw, if I'm not mistaken. But we ended up being in the Andre the Giant Battle Royal, and it just it is what it is. And I feel like if you're a competitor and you get an opportunity to to be on WrestleMania on the card at all, you just like make the most of that opportunity. Like bust your ass all throughout the year, and hopefully you get some sort of special marquee position on the card. But if you don't, just deal with it and make the most with whatever you have to work with. That that's the best play when it comes to that. Are guys disappointed they end up in it? I'm sure they are. I'm, I'm sure they are. Uh, at the end of the day, <clears throat> especially where I'm at in my career now, I just want to be doing something productive. Like I don't have to be in the main event or I don't have to be in the, the most highlighted match or whatever. I just want to be doing something that is productive and keeping myself and my brother, if we're teaming together, in a in a, in a relevant position where we seem like you know we're, we're still good to go. Certainly makes sense. Let's keep going here. Um, this one comes from WWE Master 2018. First off, did you get a chance to see the Bray Wyatt documentary, Matt? I, I haven't yet. I Okay. It's so funny. I was putting Ever to Bed a couple nights ago, and someone had uploaded on Twitter. And while I was putting her to bed between seeing two or whatever, I watched like the first 20 minutes of it or so. And what I saw was was really was really good. I really okay. Liked so, it. so I, I, will, I will watch it. Yes. Did you hear about the ending of it? I have not heard about the ending. So I'm gonna spoil a little bit here because I want to ask okay. this question to you. Uh, they do a little tease of Taylor at the end, assuming the mantle of Bray, doing like the Uncle Howie kind of thing. They like like they do a little spooky Bray Wyatt kind of vignette thing. Right. Uh, and so this question comes from WW Master 2018 says thoughts on the ending, aka post cred scenes of the Bray Wyatt documentary. Thoughts on Bo Dallas potentially continuing Wyndham's legacy and continuing the story. I mean, I, I would like to see that. And I have heard that is something that is very likely to happen. Uh, I think it's a cool way to honor him. And, and he gives Taylor something to do to, you know, re, you know, honor in remembrance of his brother as well. So I, I, I do like that. And I hope they do do it. Let's stick with the documentaries here. RJ from Reffin It Up says, we recently saw documentaries on Roman and Bray produced by WWE. When all said and done, would you ever work with WWE again on a documentary? And who would you want to produce it like Paul Heyman produced Romans? What's up, RJ? Always good to hear from you from Reffin It Up. Um, you know, up, upon thinking about that and putting a little thought into it, that's cool that Paul Heyman did produce Romans. I, I didn't know that. I just, I learned that now. Um, I think it would be interesting to see Michael Hayes, Michael Hayes' spin on myself and Jeff, especially knowing us from the early days, just when we were back wearing the Daisy tights, you know, hope and faith and all that, uh, just to kind of see how his journey's gone. Because I know he's always kind of watched from afar, like after doing the 
final deletion and some of the cinematic things. He was, you know, from afar, I said, oh, I was really proud of you guys doing that and, you know, thinking out of the box and this, that, and the other thing. Uh, so, yeah, I, I would be uh, – I, I would vote to have Michael Hayes do it. Dylan, interesting question here. As a fellow pinball fanatic and one who's very jealous of your arcade, what's your favorite pinball machine ever made? I know Rebby's real big on, on the pinball flow, right? Yeah. She's a huge pinball fan. Uh, she would be a, a, a pinball machine collector uh, nonstop if I allowed her to. She would buy everything. Everything, the, the dome of deletion would be filled up with pinball machines. Um, I would say that my favorite game is the Expedition of Gold. And that's the one that she made as a gift for me. It's like the coolest gift I've ever been given. Uh, and it's, it's an amazing game and it's really fun. And she she does design work on pinball machines. Um, as far as it generally goes, we have the Royal Rumble game. Oh, nice. Yeah, so so that's that's probably my favorite, just regular, uh, you know, not custom-made pinball machine. That's cool. That's real cool. I always like the Star Wars one. They got, like, the Death Star in there. You hit the ball through that. Uh, that was a favorite of mine. I did a story back when I was in news. Um, I like doing some of the oddball stories, and I was like, on Facebook searching for stories. And I found a competitive pinball tournament going on down the road at a bowling alley. And mm -hmm. I went there and first off the competitive pinball scene is like this very close knit community that I knew nothing yeah. about, yeah. which I'm sure you've learned with Rebby a little bit. Yeah. Um, and I found a guy there who had battled cancer three times and pinball was like his way to get him through chemotherapy. And I was like, man, you, you truly never know like what people find that resonates with them. And right. just drives them through those challenges in life. So that, that's cool, man. That uh, pinball is an outlet for you, Dylan, and your wife there, Rebecca. That's yeah. uh, that's that's good stuff. The kids like pinball. They do, yeah. I, I think yeah. Maxwell is now that he's bigger and he can kind of like see the actual mm -hmm. fair, fair. Play mm -hmm. we, we also have like Attack on Mars, which is a really cool game. Uh, it it okay. does some pretty amazing things. Uh, we have a uh, we 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 have a few cool games but yeah That's those cool. are the ones that i prefer yeah mo train a, a philosophical question matt how moist is moist hmm. you have to be able to fill the fluid mm. that's one of those words that like sends a shiver down your spine you know moist or fluid M moist yeah. It just, yeah it's like just ugh. Got the heebie-jeebies just hearing that. Mm, not a fan. Matt Hardy, it is WrestleMania week. It is a little chilly outside in Philadelphia, but that means you've got till the very last second to decide, do I want to be at Lincoln Financial Field? And if that answer is yes, our pals over at Game Time can help you get there. Game Time, make sure that you don't have to worry when you buy tickets to your next big event, whether it's sports, music, comedy, theater, wrestling, whatever it may be with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Matt Hardy, what is your favorite part about the Game Time app? I just like how easy it is. It is the most convenient ticket buying process you can totally go through. Uh, it, it's, it's easier than most uh retailers would set you up just to buy tickets there you go to game time it's a one and done you go in you know where you're going to be sitting you're not going to be hitting hit with any extra fees you you it, it's it's one price and that is a totally encompassing your experience you get those tickets at game time you're set last minute tickets flash deals zone deals the all-in pricing that matt mentioned you toggle this feature on it shows the total up front no surprise fees at checkout you can get a panoramic view from your seat in the app if you look at the individual seat views and the absolute best part i, I mean the last minute deal save you up to 60 percent off buying last minute tickets for sporting events concerts theater comedy whatever it may be or potentially even wrestlemania and with the lowest price guarantee game time will make sure that it will credit you 110 percent of the difference your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time download the game time app create an account and use code hardy for 20 dollars off your first purchase terms apply again create an account and redeem code h-a-r-d-y for 20 dollars off download the game time app today lowest price last minute tickets guaranteed uh alan interesting question i've never thought to ask you this did you take any gymnastics prior going into wrestling? Uh, I did not. 
uh, neither myself or Jeff. Uh, the the only thing we did is like train ourselves to flip out on a trampoline. You know, we we begged our dad for a trampoline and we finally got one. Uh, and and that is really the only gymnastic lessons we had. They were you know self taught. Where do you think you guys picked up the daredevil quality? I mean, I, I think we always had that because we were just we, we were always great. We were just two, you know, two country boys who were both fearless and just very boy, like wanting to do whatever, like going to the woods and like build hideouts. Like we would go uh, and hit, you know, hike like into the boys camp was beside us and they have over a thousand acres. We would like go deep into their land where they knew they were in woods and we'd get lost sometimes and it'd take forever before we'd get back. Uh, there was also a place where they had a trolley that you could like start at the top and like there was this kind of ravine that they had and it went down and it was pretty long, like a hundred feet. It was a really cool ride. Uh, we actually would go do that every so often. And I remember one time when Jeff and I were younger, probably, I was probably 13. He was probably 10. Right. Uh, we snuck to where the, uh, the trolley was and we were going on the zip line, going down, holding the trolley on the zip line. And we were both doing it at the same time because I was holding the actual wooden handle and he was on the rope. And because he had grown up and they hadn't cleared it in months, there was a whole bunch of briars that had grown up and like we were sagging down because it was also oh, no. Jeff went through all the briars on the <laughs> bottom. And I like barely got through them too. I mean, it, we would we would go to places that had high dives and we'd be j jumping off high dives, you know, at 10, 11, 12 years old. So, I mean, we just, we were just always like that. So it wasn't even like something we thought about. I don't think we were just that we enjoyed doing stuff like that. It's like your survivalists out there, you know? Yeah, I know. I mean, we are. Yeah. I've, I've used that term some survivalist. Yeah. Yeah. No, nah, that's interesting. Cause, Cause it's like you reach a point in life where you discover like, Hey, I'm, I'm a pretty decent athlete. And yeah. you go out there. Like what, when did you discover that? Like, was that backyard you discovered that? Was it playing baseball? How did you figure that out? I think playing baseball is the first time I said, Oh, well, I'm pretty good at this. And I remember even like, I played football and I was okay at it. I was just like, I remember being like strong. Like I would be, there was a couple of times I did some stuff like as, as a, as a running back, I would just like plow through people because it was hard to take me down at one point, but I wasn't like the fastest, like where I'd be a great receiver or like someone who would like was given the ball to like run and get through a hole and give a touchdown. I was just like kind of the guys hard to take down. I'd do that in, in linebacker or something. And I enjoyed those things, you know, just getting the opportunity to do it. And I enjoyed like the contact stuff and ba baseball ended up becoming my, my true love though at that time. Because like, as I've said before, like myself and Jeff, our first dream was to be pro baseball players because we were both, we both excelled in baseball and our dad coaches and everything. So we really love that. That's awesome. Uh, Steven, fun question here. If you had to choose another tag team partner, not your brother, to go on a lengthy tag team title run with, who would it be, past and present? So he gives Bruno or Roman. So like one past, one present. Gotcha. Um, I would say from the past, uh, I would go with uh, I'd go with the Macho Man, Randy Savage. Figured that. Yeah, that's a pretty easy one to call, I think. Um, and from the present. Hell, I might even say from the present, uh, myself and Christian Cage, we might we might have a fun little time. He's still okay. present. Yes. Give me give me a younger guy. Give me someone you know, kind of up and coming. No, I, I I definitely can. Uh, I'm I'm wearing. By the way, I'm wearing my best Christian Cage outfit here today. Oh uh, yeah yeah yeah. You rock it. You rock. It's my best CLP you, here. You you were, um, you were so yeah. in the CLP mode. Give give uh, me one one young talent. Uh, Kenny Omega. I'll say Kenny Omega. Okay. That's fun. I'm into that. Definitely into that. You know, anything Kenny Omega resonates with me. Let's, let's talk about CLP here. John Askin back yeah. in 2010, what was the plan for you and Christian during money in the bank? I honestly thought it would come down to the two of you for the briefcase. There, I remember there was one point where they didn't have a they didn't have a, a winner necessarily for that match because they said it it could have been they they named like four people it could have been and they had mine and Jay's name both in it too they said so it was kind of up in the air we're not sure what we're gonna do we're thinking about the direction we're gonna go afterwards 
Uh, but we were we were heavily interactive. We interacted heavily with one another in that match, if I'm not mistaken. I think that was probably because of our history. But there there may have been even talk about doing an angle with us as it was. There, there wasn't any kind of set payoff. But I know both of our names were like on the list as possible winners of that Money in the Bank. Was that the Mania match? Yes. Okay, because yeah. there were three Money in the Bank matches that year. Oh well, I, then don't quote me. It might not be. It might not have been. There was the there was the Mania one that Jack Swagger won. That's when they started going nuts, right? Then they had the Money in the Bank pay per view, where Kane and I believe Miz won. So. Yeah. I, yeah. I feel like I feel like it was the one that Swagger won. Swagger won. Yeah. Were... Was he ready at that time? Mm, I don't know. I mean, it it, it kind of depends on the position you put him in. Could he have used more seasoning? Yes, of, of course. But I mean, also, it, it depends on the position you booked the guy into as well. Because he went on to beat Jericho almost immediately for the title. Mm -hmm. and didn't really do a whole lot with it and never was really back in that prism in WWE. He had one quick run in 2013, but I don't right. know. It just seemed like maybe someone who peaked a little too early before he really fully got it and then I think became a much better performer, uh, especially in AEW. I think he became a better performer than he was in WWE. And and, um, and and there, there's some guys it takes a while for them to really become their their best self when it comes to a performer. Uh, Swagger is an example of that. I think he has become a lot better as he's been around because nothing nothing teaches you in pro wrestling like experience. There are some guys that just catch on immediately and like set the world on fire like Kurt Angle. But most guys, it takes them a little while to really learn what they're doing. Well, I mean, sure. one of the best, one of the best examples ever is Mark Henry because people. Oh, yeah. Did not, but, but but towards the end, when I was working with Mark in ECW, when he was the ECW champion, he was great to work with. I would have worked with him every night. He was easy. He was safe. He was smart. He got the most mileage out of everything he did, and he he knew who he was, and he worked that way. He he was great. I, I loved working with Mark Henry. I, I mean, Mark debuts in 1996, and he doesn't even hit his climax until 2011. So mm -hmm. put that into perspective. And man, when you're right, like when he found a little after ECW, when he found the Hall of Pain gimmick yeah, and started getting into that territory, he was awesome. He was absolutely awesome. And uh, no one can quite rock a salmon suit like Mark Henry either. So I'm a big fan of the Mark Henry salmon suit. What a, what a historic, legendary moment that was. All-time great Raw segment. Yeah. All-time great segment. Absolutely. No questions asked. Um, let's go to Will. And you can't give Macho Man for the answer here, okay? <laughs> if you could work any opponent that's no longer with us at WrestleMania, who would it be and why? All right, good deal. Um I think I know your response, but I'm curious. I'd like to hear it. Yeah, with that without it being Macho Man, right? Without it being Macho Man. I think I know who you'll pick. Mm -hmm. Let me think. Let me put a little thought into this one. I'll, I'll throw I, my, I, I I would think instinctually I would say that you would, uh, initially Owen would come to mind. Owen's a great one, yeah. No, Owen 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 is one that does stand out, especially someone who's no longer with us. Because uh, also I would I would have Brett in that, but obviously Brett is still with us. Sean in that uh, that would be a big deal. Yeah, o Owen's Owen's a good one. That's a great answer. Maybe Razor. Maybe, maybe Razor. Yeah, it'd be great. It'd be it'd be fun to do a Razor match with a. Uh, it'd be fun to do a ladder match with Razor Ramon. Oh, like, there you go. Uh, you know him and Sean. There you go. I like that. I, I think you and Owen in your primes would have had a hell of a match. Would have been, and he would have gotten the entertainment aspect of it down pat with you. So, right, uh, I would have enjoyed that for sure. We got Josh Kerr. When it comes to ice cream, are you a Neapolitan or chocolate chip ice cream person? Mm, I've never I, known you to be much of an ice cream guy. I'm I'm not a big ice cream guy. Uh, I would say chocolate chip. I would even go a little more, and I'd say mint chocolate chip. Mint so chocolate chip. If if I was gonna eat ice cream, like that, they they go like the kids. Whenever they do school, uh, once somebody gets enough points, they get to pick what they want to do. And a lot of times, it's like go eat ice cream, and they'll go to you know Cold Stone Creamery. And 
every time they go to Cold Stone, like I'll go through them. It's like, what are you getting? I said, oh, nothing. <laughs> you know, like it, whatever they eat, like I might have like a scoop of theirs, you know, because they they never eat the whole thing anyway. But sure. yeah, I'm not a big not a big ice cream guy as it is anyway. Well, it's because you're watching yourself, you know. Working on it. That's what Brad wants to know about. He says, congrats, Matt, on your successful weight loss and body transformation. What's been your routine and what's your diet looked like? Um, I mean, my my routine more than anything has just been uh, I'll wake up empty stomach, especially when I'm at home, right? It's different when I'm at different gyms because I can't gauge it the same because every, you know, every machine's a little different, whatever. But you know, I'll put all my settings on my elliptical. And I'll like bust my ass to like get at a point where I've, I've got to hit 450 now. You know, 400 was the original goal doing 30 minutes and it has to be 450. And I've gotten into the 470 category a little bit. And I feel like to get higher, I would have to put more time on it. But dude, you know, the first 10 minutes are pretty good. Like those last 10 minutes are just like, they're like you, you're fighting for your life. And like every time I wear a set, I mean, I sweat the entire shorts out. I just, I, I burn so many calories uh, and it just really jump starts my metabolism in the morning. And it also helped whenever I was able to go out and do these cold plunges. And I'm in the process right now of looking around. I'm going to buy some sort of cold plunge so I can continue to do this as, as, it, as it warms up now. I can't do it like I did during the winter, obviously. Um, so those are both two very two things that are very beneficial for it. Um, and also just eating smaller portions at meals. You know what I mean? It's just if you get super hungry as opposed to like eating something that uh, – isn't healthy or even a snack that has like a ton of calories. I'll just take like some pistachios and I'll eat a few pistachios and, and that'll be it. And I'll just go into like, it's my time for my next little portion of my meal. And then my, my thing that I've been doing again recently now is just trying to cut back the clock on when I fast a little bit starting at night until I get up the next morning. But I will say this, like, I love to eat. I love to get me a good meal. You know how it is where we love some good flavorful and seasoned, oh, yeah. no doubt. So uh, I, I love that stuff. And I mean, most stuff I eat, though, is, is pretty healthy. I, I really don't eat eat a lot of stuff that's like dead calories or, or bad stuff. Today, they had some potato chips as we were driving to the airport. And like, oh, you want these? Like, ah, no, thanks. You know, just uh, just don't do a lot for me. I like I like I, I like putting healthy stuff into my body. Meanwhile, I'm out there smoking a ham on Easter. And <laughs> it was, oh boy, howdy, was it good? I'll tell you that. <laughs> um, that's a uh, that's great, man. Yeah, I really love how to, how to slice. You you look great, and it's you feel great. I know that, so that's awesome. I'm glad to see that. Uh, let's let's keep going here. Fun question from Rob. Lots of WrestleMania questions this week. What is the greatest WrestleMania match that we never got to see? Hmm. Uh, the first thing that pops in my mind is uh, is Ric Flair versus Hulk Hogan. I remember being disappointed that that wasn't a WrestleMania match. Whenever I remember being such a big deal, right? When he showed up with the big gold belt and they like uh, you know put the put the static over it, right? Um, uh, it, it was pixelated and they put it, they pixelated the title and I was like, oh my god, Ric Flair's coming to WWE. He's gonna wrestle Hulk Hogan. It's gonna be an amazing WrestleMania. Whatever. That's one thing that, that stands out to me. Uh, another thing that also stands out to me is Sting versus The Undertaker. I think for me, that's the biggest one. Yeah. Amazing that that didn't happen, isn't it? It's crazy. Crazy that didn't happen. And there's there's a lot of reasons why it didn't happen. Um, you know, Sting wasn't convinced that Vince would treat him right mm -hmm. coming over from WCW which honestly he probably had a hunch on um and he felt in 2015 that there wasn't an appetite for the match right which is so fascinating but uh just the aura of the two of them would have been great and you, man you could still have that match today as as a cinematic match if you really wanted to sure, yeah so i still think it's crazy man that Taker's last match was a cinematic match and like without you doing broken mat the Undertaker's final match doesn't happen the way that it did like there's a direct correlation between the final deletion and the Undertaker's last match also the guy who was uh producing all of those is the guy that was uh behind Taker's last match too of course JB yeah. big shouts to your boy Let's see. Let's go to Gabriella. 
Do you ever lose sleep before a big match? If so, what type of match makes you lose sleep? Man, I haven't in a while. I, I do remember those days like uh, WrestleMania 16, the triangle ladder match. I remember the night before the match because uh, we had to be up early and there was like a lot of stress and, and pressure. I remember it being hard to sleep. I'm like, God, I got to get to sleep. So I'm like physically ready to go and rock and roll and be at my physical best tomorrow. And I did. I, I had problems sleeping there. And I feel like there's a couple other occasions when, you know, bigger matches, maybe even like, you know, uh, TLC two at WrestleMania 17 in Houston. Um, you know, any, any time there was a big match, I would say uh, around that point of time earlier in my career, there would be times where it's like, Oh my God, I've got to sleep enough. I've got to sleep enough. And I feel like you stress yourself out so much. Uh, it makes it even harder to sleep. So, so th th those scenarios have happened with me. And now I think I've gotten old enough and just maybe I'm comfortable enough and, Maybe uh, I just I don't get the butterflies like I used to. It's it's not as a big of a deal as far as the. the How the did movie. you get any sleep before WrestleMania 33? I, I slept like a baby that night. <laughs> well, because you did have an exhausting match that night too. Yeah, so. um, uh, I was I was worried I was worried how sore I was worried that I was going to be sore, but I was even more worried how Jeff was going to feel the next day. Um, it was it was wild, and I knew I was like, we got to go to sleep, guys. Like we, I remember telling, you know, my wife and the kids too that time. So we got to go to sleep because we got a long ass day tomorrow. Like you know, not only did we have a five hour evolve signing we had to do, and then we were stepping into this deal at WrestleMania. So it was it was a long day, you know. But just the most important things for those days is you got to sleep. Uh, a good example is going to be this day that we're presently in now, this night, Thursday, when we're recording it, I have to sleep good tonight because tomorrow is going to be a long day too, right? I'll be up at 6.45. Same. Uh, go train. <laughs> uh, go do cardio workout. Maxwell can't wait to get up with me. He loves to do that. And he demanded I get him up this morning. You know, I love that. He comes and he just plays a switch and hangs out with me. Um, and, and then we'll be down at 9 o'clock signing till 2. And then you know, we'll probably grab something to eat and then we'll do, you know, the Extreme Life of Matt Hardy here at the Russell Cade Hotel. And then uh, we'll have time to probably have dinner and then it'll be off to the Monster Factory. I mean, it's going to be a long day, but it's going to be. A, a, I think it's a, funny a, that you think you're going to be done at two, but whatever. I guess we'll we'll see how that goes. <laughs> well, yeah, right. We'll see. Yeah, I got WWE interviews in the morning. Going to talk to your boy, Ray. Cool. He's on the docket. Yeah, so. I, I I love me some Ray, man. Oh, yeah. That's still an episode we're going to hit. I promise you that. We're going to hit Ray. Uh, that's been long planned. Um, let's go to B13 Nerdcast of Randomness, who actually came to our live show at Kowloon. Uh, and he, yeah. says, he says, thank you for the father advice at Kowloon in Boston. Oh, very son, cool. I, I, remember, I, I remember this guy. He says, my son was born March 5th. Congratulations. Congratulations. Wanted to know what your experience was like with your firstborn, Maxel. It, it was it was wild because I didn't know what to expect. I knew I was excited. Uh, I was also very nervous. I have a vivid memory of when he was being born, and I just remember it. the first thing I see, which popped out, was he had hair. He had a very, he had a full head of hair and like curly hair, and I could see his hair starting to come out. And it's like, oh my god, that that's that's my son. Like we we made that, me and you, we made that. And and just remember as it came out, more and more, it's a person. It's like it's it's here. It's real. It's a baby. It just it was so overwhelming, and I just remember my bawling with tears of joy and happiness. It just that he was coming out. And I just remember it was like so hard to get like over his shoulders. And then like, once we got past his shoulders and he kind of popped out pretty easy, but it, it was uh, just overwhelming. And then the first time you hold this, it's just, it's inexplicable to, to someone. Who, I mean, it's just, it's, it's something you have made and created and it's like a, your life's work, your life investment and, and something you would, you finally become secondary to to another being where it's just like, you know, fuck me. It's all about this, this guy, you know? So it, it, it was overwhelming and, and it just, the best thing that's ever happened to me. And then by the time we got to Barty, mama got to the shut the fuck up phase once they're coming out and crying. So, <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> Barty is the one. Wolfie, Wolfie, Wolfie was born. He was, I mean, he came out like he was on a slip and slide. That was the easiest baby she ever had. Right through. He, he, he 
slid out. It was you wild. said hike, and she snapped him right to you. Yeah, right, right there. <laughs> we always joke about that. She she had to push pretty hard for Barty and Evie. Maxwell was the hardest though, but it was her first yeah. one. Like Wolfie, Wolfie was Wolfie was a cakewalk compared there to the go. other. So you know, let's piggyback on the life questions. Nick Thames asking, "What's the biggest lesson you've learned in life, inside and out of the ring?" Um, I feel like, I mean, in, in inside of the ring, when it comes to, to wrestling, talking about that on a surface, it's like you know, just try, try and stay calm, uh, keep your composure, you know, whenever you're doing something, and like, regardless of what happens, it's going to be okay. Like, try not to freak yourself out too much. Like, don't don't let your nerves drive you too crazy, and especially once you're out there doing something, just like breathe and like get through it and, and, and do it. I think in life, just like just the whole journey of life is just taught me so many things. I mean, first and foremost, like to I feel like I don't really buy in absolutes anymore. And I think like never say never is is a is a big thing. Like a lot of people say, like, oh well, I'll never do this, but just like people change, you know, as time time goes on, or like, oh, I would never, you know, believe in this, or I would never do that. What I just I just I, I don't really buy into absolutes. That's something life has kind of told me. And then like if there are people that think differently from me, then like I'm okay with that. I mean, they're they're allowed to. As long as they're not disrespectful to me, I don't have any issue with them. You know, it's just people are people are allowed to think differently than than, than I do. And that's something that I've I've accepted throughout my life and I feel like I've gotten a lot better at that. I love hearing that. Good lesson there learned by Matt Hardy and shared with all of you. And again, guys, you can catch Matt share some of these wise words at either of our live shows here today. Very excited for them. Cannot wait. Um, you know, one, one of the things that I love about our podcast, Matt, is we, we do get a lot of wrestlers who listen and want to learn from your words. Uh, I know the answer, Josh Breezy is one of those. He's a huge hardy mark too. Yeah. Uh, he's got a good one. When putting a match together, like the, I quit brother versus brother match. How do you go about that? Is it more on the fly? Do you have a solid layout, fill in the gaps, explain the process? And I would imagine, Matt, that breaking your hand is not part of the planned aspect of that match. <laughs> no, it was not. <laughs> so um, you were concerned it could happen. <laughs> yeah, well, Vin, Vince Vince didn't want us to do it, but he allowed us to do it. Uh, Vin, Vince said, I don't know, that could be bad. He said, I don't think you should do it. And Jeff said, no, it's going to be fine, man. I'm going to land on him just with my legs. He said, well, okay, if you think. So I guess he was right on that 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 on that particular scenario. Um, when we did that I quit match, that was a big change of pace for us in some ways because we wanted to try and do something different that we didn't really do as opposed to like we knew we were going to get to the extreme I quit stuff towards the end, right? But like during the match, we wanted to like try and do some more wrestling holds or like maybe work a body part and do this. And that's something that typically wasn't like, you know, part of our arsenal. So, so that was something that we worked on. We like figured out ways to like creatively like try and punish a body part and then like work a hold on top of it to try and get the brother to quit until we broke into the extreme stuff because we wanted to make this match like a little different than our other stuff had been because we just came off a stretcher match which had a ton of extreme and crazy batshit stuff in it. And then at WrestleMania, we had the extreme rules match, right? You know, that obviously was going to be extreme. So we tried to we try to interject a little more wrestling in it, like really trying to get some holds to like make the other brother quit and like show people a little bit of a different side of us. So I remember that felt different to us as we were doing it. But like at the end of the day, looking back at it, it was, it was good that I think we, we tried to step outside of our comfort zone and do something different. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's a memorable match for sure that we will cover in long form at some point. Uh, Bobby. Well, hell Bobby. Well, hell. Oh, a pleasure. If you and Jeff had signed with WCW, would you see yourselves in the tag team title hunt there? It all depends on what opportunity you're given. You know, if we would have been given the opportunity uh, and we'd have had somebody behind us and like kind of holding our holding our hand and like showing us what we need to do, because I think in WWE, we eventually got that because we were having enough good matches with the edge and Christians and the two cools and the guys like that on the road that they decided to repackage us and put us with Michael Hayes and get behind us and push us. And they were kind of holding our hand at that point. Right. So they gave us an opportunity. 
I think without a question, I think if we would have been in WCW and they would have given us that opportunity to run with the ball and like give it, given us the advice we needed, I think, yes, we would have been in the tag team title contention. I'll be honest. I don't think it would have meant anything to you guys. The WCW tag team division in the late 90s had zero equity whatsoever, and it really wasn't great by any stretch. The WWF tag team scene was way hotter. Even the ECW tag team scene was hotter. So I, I honestly think had you been in WCW – you would have both ended up individual cruiserweights at some point. And I, I don't even think that it would have worked out. And truth be told. Right. Because you think- told me about ECW too. That's just a shout out to Paul Heyman. He, uh, he really highlighted everyone's strengths and he mm-hmm. like held their hands and, and put them in positions to succeed. He, he was a master of doing that. Think about it though. When WCW was purchased by WWE, how many tag teams came over and were successful? Yeah, uh, you're, I mean, you're right. There, there, there wasn't a lot. No, nope, I don't think there was any. I mean, O'Hare and Palumbo came over. That didn't last. There, I, I legitimately can't think of any team that came over that was successful. So they, they, they were part of the natural born thrillers. That's right. That's right. Then, uh, um. Yeah, I, I really don't think so. So I think you guys being where you were at that time, it was the perfect storm of right place, right time. And yeah. it ended up working out for sure. Um, I want to give a shout out, by the way, mentioned Bobby, top guy, uh, top guy, Josh Henney, uh, who he didn't have a question that I was able to get in this week, but uh, he did mention that he completed his physical therapy from his knee surgery. He had the knee replacements and he said, you know, the extreme life was one of the podcasts that got him through his rehab. So shout out to you, Josh. Congrats. Outstanding. On, uh, Congrats, on, Josh. Love to hear it. I'm getting through that. We, we do love to hear it. That's, that's exactly it. Matt, you know, earlier in the show, you were talking about eating healthy and like you, you want to indulge every now and then. Like, wouldn't it be amazing if you could have the best of both worlds? Like you could eat a cheeseburger, but it doesn't go straight to your thighs and there's zero calories. That would be great. Be <laughs> like enjoying the flavors, but it not having any effect on you. You just wish that you could have it both ways. You wish that you could play outside with the kids in the cold camera, North Carolina night, and it not actually get anyone sick. You know, like you wish you could have it both ways. See guys, tend to think that looking sharp means starchy Oxfords and stiff chinos rather than effortless comfort. But it is possible, Matt Hardy, to have it both ways. You see, Mack Weldon makes timeless apparel with modern performance fabrics for guys who want to look and feel sharp without actually sacrificing comfort. From their light-as-air underwear to innovative anti-odor tees and versatile yet also comfortable pants, Mack Weldon has a full range of clothes that never go out of style. Now, Matt Hardy, I know that our friends at Mack Weldon, they hooked you up with their pants. I mean, they these things are so freaking comfortable. But they're not just making you feel comfortable. They're making you feel confident, too, aren't they? They really are. I got to tell you, whenever I'm wearing Mack Weldon, uh, I'm with my wife. She's out there slaying, and I feel okay. I, f- I feel like I'm <laughs> slaying as well. And my kids, you know, kids, there's nothing like them. They're young. They're innocent. They're just cool because they're themselves. You know, they they don't they don't think anything otherwise. And even sometimes I'm hanging out with my kids. I'm like, oh, they're going to think I'm the older guy. That's not cool, whatever. But if I'm wearing my Mack Weldon, I feel like I'm a cool kid. Just like you're the cool. You're the cool dad. I feel like I'm the cool dad. I'm just like the cool kids. (laughs) I love hearing that. Listen, whenever you hear like the term performance fabric, you usually tend to associate that with like techy or shiny, but Mack Weldon clothes are designed to fit your style and the demands of modern life. They look like quote unquote regular clothes, but they feel like the latest in modern comfort. They're the go-to choices for guys who want to look great without even trying. And we want to help you with our friends over at Mack Weldon. Get timeless looks with modern comfort for Mack Weldon. Go to MacWeldon.com and get 20% off your first order with promo code HARDY. That's M-A-C-K-W-E-L-D-O-N.com, promo code H-A-R-D-Y. Uh, fun one. We got a couple more here, and then we'll wrap things up. Um, Trill Joey asking, Jeff has the best tattoos in wrestling. Do you know any of the inspirations behind them? And what would you get tattooed? I I know some of the inspira- uh, inspirations behind Jeff's stuff. And I, I think uh, a, a lot of it 
there's there's different parts of his body, different sections that have different inspirations for things. I know one of the things that he got more recently, he has like the big demon on his neck and that represented the demon he felt like that had haunted him with addiction. I, I know that was a representation of that. And he has different little stories all throughout his life. And I think a lot of things kind of mean stuff. There's some stuff even from some of his pets that he's had and whatnot. Uh, but they, 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 they all do mean different things, especially to him specifically. Uh, as far as I go and what tattoo would I get? I, I'm not a big tattoo guy, as you guys know. Uh, you know, it's a mad fact. Matt has zero tattoos. But one thing I could see myself getting, like at some point down the road, would be like my children's names. Yeah. And I told Jeff if I was going to get a tattoo, I feel like the, the Hardy Boy symbol would be one yeah. of the things I would consider getting as well. My uncle has his kids' names interlaced and linked along his wrists like that. So yeah. it's, it's a nice little gesture there. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're one of the few wrestlers that don't have tattoos. Actually, actually I am, yeah. It's true. Uh, Rosie. Matt, as the nickname goes, Coach Rosie. Do you have right. any good stories on Rosie? Just finished watching the biography on Roman and learned a lot about good old Rosie, he says. Yeah, hey, what's up, Coach? Always good to hear from you, my man. Uh, Coach is one of the people I always love to hear from because he's always so positive and optimistic about things in life. and Always driven, always focused and going in the right direction the productive direction. I I knew Rosie a little. Uh, I knew Eki better um, because they worked together, you know, doing the, you know, when they were doing the three-minute warning deal. Uh, I, I got to interact with them a little bit there. And then once they, once they switched and split up and kind of went their own separate ways, I didn't see Rosie quite as much then. Shane has lots and lots of love for him. This is her Shane I'm talking about, Shane Helms, Hurricane. Uh, they work together, and Ch Shane just – puts him over huge talks about how great of a guy he was he really his demeanor what you know his demeanor reminds me of of roman's demeanor you know when they're off camera when they're just out of character you know just back chilling and it's funny their their demeanors really do seem very similar and obviously you understand why with them being blood um but he was always a sweetheart always a nice guy uh i i hate i didn't know him better but uh, i i have nothing but good things to say about him so he's just like cool, calm, and collected backstage. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, that's is a shame that uh, he left us way too soon, for sure. It is. Uh, Brad Stan, are you a Nasty Boys fan? We did. I remember. Uh, I remember seeing the Nasty Boys back doing some indie stuff, and I, I thought they were interesting. I thought the fact that they were doing an elbow off the top, being big guys, was really interesting. And I remember when they first came to. Uh, NWA WCW and they were doing the pit stop Jeff and I we thought it was pretty humorous we would we would emulate it sometimes in some of the indie stuff we would do too you know we uh, especially if we had a guy that uh, we were wrestling someone on stallion show or some indie show where we were teaming whatever if we were hills in the match I'd say come on let's take him to the pit and we'd go in there and we'd do the deal too so we did we mimicked the nasty boys pit stop a couple times we thought it was we thought it was pretty silly we thought it was funny but pretty silly Two more here. Uh, Drew, who would you rather wrestle in a cage match, Bret Hart in his prime or HBK in his prime? Ooh, that's turned into a triple threat. Um, yeah, there you go. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, you know, I, I'll say because I did, I, I got to work with Sean. I got to wrestle against him some. I got a team with him. Um, I guess I would say Bret just because I've never got to interact with Bret at all physically, like in the, in the context of a wrestling match. Especially in the cage, his his cage match with Owen is yeah. one of the most underrated cage matches you're ever going to find. Right, um, SummerSlam '94, I think I got that right. Um, Big Blue, that old blue cage, just yeah. something brutal about that cage, and yeah. uh, made made for a good one. Uh, let's finish with this one. See if you can add some levity here, Matt, a wrestling historian, big fan of the show. Shout out to him. What's your favorite Ric Flair story that you can share? And I like that he. He added that you can share <laughs> at the end of that. What's your, what's your favorite one that you can share? I, I definitely have stories with him I cannot share, or stories that I have seen, you know, from him. Um, I, one of one of my favorite stories is, and I've I've told this a little bit in the past, if I'm not mistaken, on here, is when Shawn Michaels and John Cena we were in the UK and they'd had like a 45, 50 minute match, whatever. And, uh, you know, they, they had a killer match. We were back at the bar. And this is when Sean had, like, 
cleaned his life up, right? And he's, you know, sober and he's not being old school HBK that you hear all these horror stories about, right? And uh, we were all back at the bar. People were eating, restaurant, bar, drinking, whatever. And some guys were brown shots, whatever. And I remember Rick, Rick said, Woo, you're still the man. He said, That's it. He said, He said, Drinks are on me tonight, you know, HBK. And Sean's like, Rick, I can't do that. You know, I don't do that. Whatever. He said, are you kidding me? The way you went out and you tore the house down with John Cena? He said, he said, just because you have a, a one shot, because you have one drink, that doesn't mean you're you're a bad Christian. God's not going to punish you for doing that just because you have one shot. He said, you need to have a little shot. You know, like it's, it's a night of celebration. I, let me get it for you. And eventually Rick talked him into having a drink. And he did that. And then it ended up being another and a couple. And then. Before you knew it, Rick was laughing because he knew he got Sean back in like his old mode, right? Oh, boy. Where, Sean, where Sean was just like, like, look at you, Jeff Hardy. You think you're hot shit because you're like the young me. All the chicks love you, whatever. He said, but did they buy you every time you do a, a kick like I would do that you're going to knock out your opponent? No, they didn't because they bought into me. They bought into me and everything. I was like, <laughs> he was like shit. And he said, what about you, big man? He pointed to Eki, to Umaga. He says, what about you? He said, what if I threw that kick at you? He said, what would you do? He said, you'd have no choice but to sell it. He said, and you'd do it because you know I'm the man, right? And he said, what'd you say? You want to give it a shot? And he said, oh, I'm just kidding with you. <laughs> and, and Rick was just like the puppet master laughing at all this because he knew he had Oh, my shot. goodness. That that's oh. that's probably my favorite Rick story, Rick Bush story that I can share. Oh my goodness, that is definitely one for the books for sure. Fun stuff there, Matt. Uh, always great questions from the Extreme Life faithful. Thank you to everyone who got some good ones in. I, I hold on to a lot of them if we don't get to them, so we'll try to keep them in the rotation. And just if you didn't get your question answered this time, doesn't mean next time you won't. So keep sending them in. Uh, we we are on a time limit here to get things done. Um, but uh, it's going to be a great day today. Very, very excited. I'm at two live shows, WrestleCon, 4 o'clock, and then at the world-famous Monster Factory. Pardon me. Uh, it's just going to be total, total blast. And I really hope that people take the time to come out and uh, enjoy it with us because this is a celebration of the industry this weekend, and it's going to be so much fun anything you want to add on that front indeed uh yeah please if if you can join us please do it's going to be it's going to be a great time uh, and once again uh, the tickets for the extreme life of matt hardy stage show here at wrestlecon are only 25 dollars. so we, we we intentionally tried to make them as affordable as possible because i know everybody is going to be spending so much money so yeah if you get a chance to join us and uh, come in we'll talk shop about the tlc years and i'm very excited about the monster factory experience especially to sit down and, and talk industry with people in the industry uh i love nothing more so it's going to be a great great night and i hope to see each and every one of you there at one of those events and of course, we want you as well on board with us here at the Extreme Life of Matt Hardy. Head on over to advertisewithhardy.com. Promote your business to the extreme by getting it out in front of thousands of listeners and viewers every single week on the Extreme Life of Matt Hardy. Oh boy, baby, let's do it. Let's have some fun. Really, really looking forward to it. Congratulations again on being the goat of the goat. It's going to be uh, uh, another accolade to add to the Hardy Boy of Wikipedia. And uh, we'll make sure that we get it up there as well. <laughs> there we go, yeah. Lots and lots of accolades. Thank you all. Of course, Thank you my all. friend. The words have been spoken. We'll see you next time right here on The Extreme Life of Matt Hart. Delete!